Nos está contento con nos por venir junto a la mañana temprano y me que prometo que me salme que para mi casa para to greet you at this time. Buen día, Romana. Un tiki background over de nos John Cusolange Treno anto pabos nan sound tiki más o menos waar we vandaan komen. <laughs> yeah. So, 1981, I went to Bible school. Ik ben van Curaçao, met dat ik Curaçao. Bible school. Bible school, me daddy Corso. Na Dallas, Christ for the Nations. Ma bai school na Dallas, na Christ for the Nations. Anto John Tame Abin uh, also came, sorry. John came from Illinois uh, to Bible school, uh, Christ for the Nations, Anto, that's where we met. Anto inano sa konose otro, so John Abin for the Illinois being Bible school na Texas. So we married in 1984. So, in 1984, we were 41 years married. We have three kids and five grandkids. Two of our kids were born in Curaçao and one in Dallas. In those 40 years, This is our third time to live on the island of Curaçao. The first time we came in 84. The second time we came in 96. And then last year we came back. So it's going back and forth. And our kids were raised on the island, partly on the island. And also in the States. So they feel home at here and they feel home at the States. Um, I want to encourage you this morning that you don't come with the mindset I hope they're going to talk about the issues in my wife or husband's life. But in your life. No, pero de vida. It says in Psalms 139, Search me, O Lord. So point your finger at yourself. See what's in my heart. And let God deal with the person next to you. Or if they didn't come, let God deal with them wherever they are. But you open your heart. That God speaks to your heart. Because in marriage there are two hearts involved. And God has to change in our, in our hearts. One other little thing I want you to know. Pastor Remy and his wife shared yesterday when they got married they are exactly the same. Pastor um, Remy y Pastor Juliette Bisa ayer cora na casa na andaba tamescos. Two strong personalities. Dos personalidad más fuerte. Well, guess what? Pero qué pasa? We are completely opposite. No está opuesto. So we go from there. Dios nos está comisajina. God bless you. Dios bendición a vos. Thank you, Solange. We love Curacao. This is our home. And we're excited to be with you today. How many of you were here last night? Okay. We had a great evening. Pastor Amy and Arlette, and just many practical things about marriage. Pastor Amy y Arlette van a darnos información que es tan práctico tocante de matrimonio. And so this morning we're going to continue. Entonces, mientras nos enseñe. I do have there's a little manual 
that I made and translated into papiamento. Ah, me dio un manual na papiamento como atraja. Dos corazón uní. <laughs> Two hearts united. <laughs> so, during the lunchtime, if you, if you would like to get one, they'll be in the back. Desdurante de lunch, si vos quieres uno para atrás, nanta. And they're 10 guilders. Nanta cuesta 10 florín. And the money is going to help with the expenses. The money is not for me. Ando, ese año está para mí, ese año está para ayudar a cubrir gasto en el evento, en la conferencia. During the lunchtime. Desdurante el lunch, vos vos compras. There's a lot in here that we'll be talking about in the afternoon when we talk about conflict. All right, well, I want you to know that God loves your marriage. How many of you are married? Raise your hand if you're married. Okay. How many of you are single? Very important for singles. Uh, to learn about marriage in preparation. Importante para soltero no enseña todo cante matrimonio de preparación. I worked at a Bible school called Christ for the Nations for 14 years. A mí me atrapa ya cuatro en un Bible school que se llama Christ for the Nations. And for 13 years, I taught marriage and family. Ando para ya tres de ahí no hay más de una enseñanza todo cante matrimonio y familia. And 90 percent of the students were single. Entonces no 90 percent de los estudiantes no andaba tan soltero. And needing to learn before you get married. <laughs> All right, this morning we're going to talk about the spiritual principles and foundations found in Genesis. God is the one who instituted marriage. Not man. No gente. Man is trying to redefine marriage. Gente está tratando de redefinir matrimonio. To devalue marriage. Devaluar matrimonio. And know this: whatever God has instituted, and para ti no todo lo que Dios ha instituido. Satan hates. Satanás está odia. Satan attacks. Satanás está ataca ese. So our adversary. Hates your marriage. Dios nos enemigo te odia, vos te rabia arriba vos matrimonio. And that's why marriages are always under attack. Tal vez el matrimonio no se importa vos de ataque. So, God instituted marriage. Pues Dios ha instituido matrimonio. And God has given the manual on marriage. Ando Dios también ha dado el manual para matrimonio. And so, how many of you ever tried to put together something very complicated? How many of you guys? I remember I was putting together a bunk bed. And it was a complicated bunk bed. <laughs> if I did not have the uh, manual instructions, I could never put it together. How many of you know that marriage can be complicated? Anyone experience that marriage can be complicated? And we're, we're trying to put marriage together, but we don't know and understand God's laws and principles. Now, if you get a driver's license in America, you have to take two tests. How about in Curacao? Do you have to take a driving test? I see this letter L on cars <laughs> and these young people driving <laughs> learning how to drive <laughs> then they have to take a test <laughs> a driving test <laughs> a written test <laughs> then they get their license <laughs> what about marriage? <laughs> what test do you have to take to get your marriage license. 
Do you have to sit with someone and talk about marriage before you get married? Do you have to take a test about marriage before you get married? You don't have to do anything. You sign your name. Congratulations. You're married. <laughs> Can you imagine if your children they didn't take any driver's lessons? How old, how old in Curacao? 18? Can you imagine in America it's 16? Hopi peligroso. E mayornang to hopi nervioso. Can you imagine giving the key to your child? They didn't, they didn't take any driving lessons. They don't know the laws. And you say, son, go drive. How many of you would be very nervous? They don't know anything. And then they crash their car. Do you know that's why many marriages crash? Because they do not know the principles of marriage that God has taught. And that's what we want to teach this morning. Because in Genesis, God instituted marriage. And in Genesis, God laid the principles <coughs> for success in marriage. And so, for our marriage to stand, we have to have a foundation. The first thing you build when you build a house is the foundation. And that foundation has to carry the weight of your marriage and your children and your family. In Matthew 7, Jesus talked about two foundations. One foundation built upon sand. One foundation built upon rock. And both of these houses, a storm hit them. How many you know in life, storms hit us? Storms hit our marriages. And when the storm hits the house, Jesus said, if that house is built upon sand, it will fall. And it says, great is the fall. And that's the sad thing of today. Many marriages are falling. And great is that fall. Do you know why it's great? Because it's not just the marriage. It's the children. The children suffer. They suffer. But Jesus said the house that's built on the rock, which is the word of God, which is Jesus, the storms will hit that house, but that house will stand because it's founded on the rock. My wife and I married 40 years. We've had storms. But because we've been on the rock, we've stood against the storms of life. That's why this morning we're going to look at these foundational principles. They are very important. Because if you break the principles, 
you have problems. Вот им проблема. Right? In America, you have a speed limit. That's the law. In America, no speed maximum. Go to steer car auto. That's the law. One time, I was coming home from church, and I saw my daughter on the side of the road with a police officer next to her. Um, I met a bad steer by cars for the iglesia, and my pastor mira me you move para canti caminda con police pa peguni. And I smiled at her and I waved. <laughs> the first time she got pulled over by a police officer. Why? She broke the law. When we break the principles, we suffer the consequences. So we're going to look at these important principles. There's three I want to talk about. And if you could turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Genesis 2, verse 24. Genesis 2, 24. Genesis 2:24. Genesis, the book of beginnings. A book of beginnings. Genesis. Okay, could you read that in Papi Mento? Pese un hombre lo abandona su tata y su mamá y lo único su esposa y no lo vira un carne. Okay, here is the first principle. Esa que te promete principio. If you're taking notes, write it down. Si vas a hacer notación, escribe. The principle of priority. El principio de prioridad. The principle of priority. El principio de prioridad. When a couple gets married, Ora un pareja casa, a priority changes. El prioridad te cambia. The spouse now becomes the number one priority in their life. Whereas before you got married, your parents were the number one priority in your life. And some parents don't want to let their child go. They're not. They're not. <laughs> So, where the parents held the primary relationship in our life, they no longer have it. And all other relationships are secondary. That's relationships with your friends. Before you got married, you had a best friend. Now that you're married, your spouse is your best friend. <laughs> They're still your friend. But your spouse takes the priority over children, over work, over ministry, over hobbies. You see, God has re established relationships and there has to be an order for relationships. Even with God. How many of you know that our relationship with God, God has set a priority? The only way you can have a relationship with God is if he's number one. Right? He's the only one. Or the number one. You cannot have other things above God and have an intimate relationship with Him. You cannot have other things above your spouse and have an intimate relationship with your spouse. So here, here is the priority of relationships in our life. And when I talk about marriage, that our spouse is the number one earthly relationship. Yeah. So the order of relationships that God has set in Genesis, God is number one. 
God established a relationship with Adam. Dios estableció una relación con Adam. God is number one in our life. Dios es número uno de nuestra vida. First, we submit to Him. Primero somos sometidos a Dios. That's the first relationship. Sí, la primera relación. You see, God must satisfy our needs. Dios es un que tiene que satisfacer nuestras necesidades. No. Some people get married thinking that if I get married, that'll satisfy my needs. Tiene esta casa, ando pensando, ahora mi casa te sí, te vas a satisfacer mi necesidad. No. If I get married, that'll solve my problems. Si mi casa se te soluciona, tú no hay problema, no. Jesus has to solve our problems. Jesús es un único que soluciona nuestros problemas, no. Marriage can be satisfying. Matrimonio por tu hobby satisfa, te satisface tu hobby. But I am complete in Christ. Pero mi está completo en Cristo. That is the foundation. Foundation. Okay, God is first. Dios promete. Segundo. Na di dos lugar también. Our spouse. Nos casa. Not our parents. No nos mayor na. And last night, Pastor Amy was talking a little bit about this. Anto ayer anoche Pastor Amy pa puntiki to kante sa aki. But I have a good friend in the states. Ami di un bon amigo aquí de na. He's from Brazil. Ita di Brazil. And he loves to eat. De gusta come. When he got married, his wife did not know how to cook. You know what they eat in Brazil every day? Brown beans and rice. Every day. Oh, she, she burnt the beans. So guess what? His mother lived down the road. So guess where he went to eat? Mama's food. So he would go to eat at Mama. And the wife was mad. Because he was putting Mama above her. And Mama wasn't inviting her. And so it caused problems because of the law of priority. Parents sometimes have a hard time letting go of their children. I had a couple at Bible school. Whenever there was problems, the wife called daddy. Daddy, you don't know what he did to me. Big problems. Because daddy is going to fight for his daughter. I suggest when you have problems in your marriage, don't tell your parents. Because they're going to get mad and side for one. So number two is spouse. Number three is Muchanang. Children. Number three are our children. And when you get a child, all the attention goes to baby. Isn't that true? And that's normal. But that cannot continue for a long time. Because mama's giving all attention to baby. And daddy's over here. When is it my turn? When are you going to give me some attention? Right? So here's what you need to do. When you have children, yes, children are going to get the attention. But you must keep the priority of the relationship. Because Children are a temporary assignment. One day they're going to leave. And now you have to look at each other. <laughs> so, when you have children, you have to set a time of date nights. romántico. Get a babysitter. Go out together. 
Don't talk about the children. <laughs> Look at each other. And talk about each other. And so many times when the wife focuses on the children, the husband focuses on work. Or the hope, or the husband is open to temptation. We must always keep the priority of the relationship. Otherwise, problems will come. The next thing is work or ministry. Your career. You know, we pastored for 11 years. It's very demanding. And one day, Solange asked me, are you married to the church? Because I was giving too much time to the church. And so, we have to keep this balance. Keep this balance of, of priority. Then you have number five, hobbies. Before you were married, you could go do whatever you wanted. But now you have to consider your spouse. Your hobby cannot be above her or him. Okay, so those are the priorities of relationships. Your spouse is a priority. And God says you need to keep that priority or problems are going to come in your relationship. There can be seasons of time where we're busy in ministry or we're busy with work. But that has to be a season in, in agreement with our spouse. I have a question for you. Is jealousy bad? Can it be bad? Absolutamente. Yeah, jealousy can be destructive and I've seen that but not all jealousy is sin because we know that God is a jealous God right? so there is a righteous jealousy when is God jealous over the priority of the relationship. It says in Exodus, for you shall worship no other God. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. God is jealous for the priority of our relationship. So in marriage, there is a legitimate jealousy where we can, we can tell our concern that something is held in a higher priority than us. Like my wife told me about the church. It could be with your work. It could be with your hobbies. It could be with your parents. So there is a legitimate jealousy where we can talk so that we keep the law priority. So that's the first principle. Your spouse is the priority. First God, then your spouse, above all other relationships. The second principle is found in the same verse. It's called the principle of possession. Possession. 
It says, and they shall become one flesh. One flesh certainly means the, the sexual union. Un carne, claro, tenifica, e unión sexual. But it means more than that. Pero tenifica, más que se. It means two lives become one life. Esta significa dos vida, tabira, un vida. It's no longer me. Ya no te trata de a mí. But it's we. Pero ta nos. All that is mine is yours, and all that is yours is mine. Marriage is to be a complete union. Matrimonio me está un unión completo. Before you were married, you could buy whatever you wanted. Now that you're married, you can't just spend as you please because you have a partner. So you need to decide, and I want you to think about this, how much can you spend without telling your spouse? 25 guilders? 50 guilders? 50 florins? Thousand guilders? I don't think so. <laughs> right? But those are things you need to discuss. How much you're going to spend. I have that same friend. He made a few mistakes. <laughs> he went out and bought a brand new BMW. The only problem is he didn't tell his wife. Wives, would you be mad if your husband came home with a brand new BMW? And so he was so happy. He drives in. Honey, come look. We have a new BMW. So excited. And the wife looked at him. You take that back right now. <laughs> Put his head down. He took the car back. <laughs> Big mistake. Everything that we, that I own, becomes my wife's. Everything she owns becomes mine. My wife received an inheritance and she didn't say, you know what? I want to buy this, 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 this. And I probably would have let her buy some, you know, it wouldn't for me. But she said, what can we do with this money? What do we need to do? How can we manage this money? Another guy I worked with when he got married, he, his wife was $60,000 in school debt. Su casa estaba de 60 mil dólares na debe de estudio de universidad. He did not say. E no avisa. Good luck paying that debt. Ah, fue suerte, éxito por pagar el debe ahí. That debt became his debt. El debe ahí abrirá su debe también. And can you believe in two years he paid off sixty thousand dollars? Pues imaginaba de dos años él paga el 60 mil dólares ahí. It was his debt. His debt. So it's important pues that everything we share together. If not, we're breaking the principle of possession. Si no, no está violando el principio de posesión. And then there's going to be distrust. We share everything together. We are one. Do you know that is the greatest miracle? Is that when you say I do, God looks down upon that union and God declares you are one. No longer two. But the two have become one flesh. That is a great miracle. 
Se un milagro más grande mes. And because of that union. Entonces por motivo de unión ahí. And the power of that union. Y el poder de unión ahí. Satan seeks to destroy. Satanás está puro para destruir. Satan seeks to divide you. Satanás está puro para dividir vos. Because he knows the power of that union. Pues esa es poder de unión. The power of a union with with God and the power of a union with each other is a powerful force in the hands of God. That's why he keeps you divided. Fighting all the time. We're going to talk about conflict in the afternoon. But that's the enemy's plan to keep you in conflict. So this law, this principle, is totally against society. Because society talks about having an independent, selfish spirit. But God talks about self Lessness. Do you know what the highest goal for God that God has for your life? The highest goal for you to be happy? For... No. No. And you know, when I realized this, it helped me in my marriage. God's highest goal for me is to be like Christ. And how am I going to learn to be like Christ? In my marriage. Marriage is the greatest um, school teaching place <laughs> that God uses for me to become like Christ. Deal with my attitudes. Deal with my selfishness. Deal with my pride. God uses marriage. So if, if you have the perspective marriage is to make me happy you will be disappointed. Yes, we, we can expect happiness in marriage. But that is, is not my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is to be like Christ. God, use my marriage for me to be like you. Okay, let's talk about the third principle, which is the, the principle of transparency. The the principle of transparency. This is found in Genesis 2.25. And the man and wife were both naked, but they were not ashamed. This was before they sinned, of course. When I talk about transparency, I'm not talking in a physical sense, emotionally, with my life. You see, you cannot have intimacy without transparency. You can't have it. And so, even with God, you cannot have intimacy with God without transparency. First John 1 John 1.7 shows this principle. It's a principle of relationships that God has set. 
1 John 1 7 says this. If I walk in the light, as he is in the light, I have fellowship with him. And the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. To have a relationship with God, you have to walk in the light. You know, if, if you make a mistake, you confess it to him. And the blood of Jesus keeps us in fellowship. And you, you do something wrong. You confess. And the blood of Jesus keeps you in fellowship. And so in marriage, we have to be open and honest with each other. In our marriage, I've, I've shared with Salons things that I've struggled with. She shared with me things that she struggles with. And there has to be this safe place that when I share my struggles, I'm not going to be judged. I'm not going to be screamed at. What did you do? Well, then I'm not going to open up to you again. If you're always going to get mad at me. You see, the Bible says two are better than one. When one falls, the other picks them up. There was a time when Solange went through a very difficult uh, depression. Our child, our son, almost died. And so I had to be there with her in that time to help her. To stand with her. To encourage her. There was a time when I went through a time of trouble. And I needed Solange to stand with me. And so there has to be this transparency. Because that creates an atmosphere of intimacy. That's not always easy. Not always easy to share what I might be struggling with. But we are a team. We're a team that God has brought together. You know what the scripture says? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And sometimes in our marriage, we look at our spouse as the enemy. Your spouse is not your enemy. There is an enemy behind everything trying to divide. And so together, we come against the enemy. Because my spouse is never my enemy. But the devil will get us to think that. When you're in problems in the marriage, he will get you to think that. So, to, to remain transparent, you have to walk in forgiveness. How many times did Jesus tell us to forgive? 70 times 7, right? 70 times 7. Peter thought, 7 times? 7 times? Peter, a pencil. Jesus said, no. Jesus said, no. Every time you have to forgive. Cada biabo tengo perdona. Forgiveness in marriage Perdón de matrimonio is the key to walking in intimacy, transparency and intimacy. You have to forgive. The, 
As the blood of Jesus keeps us in fellowship, forgiveness keeps us in fellowship in marriage. Mientras el sangre de Jesús tiene nos en comunión, ando el perdón también tiene nos en comunión de nos matrimonio. What are the three principles? Number one. Priority. Number two. Possession. Number three. Transparency. Transparency. If we break those principles, we have problems in our marriage. But if we walk according to those principles, we will have success because we are following God's manual for a successful marriage. Okay. It's a little calor, calor, calor. Antique <laughs> calor. calor. <laughs> okay. Um, un momento. Glenda, es poquita. Mi taza no me va a bobar, mi taza no me va a pasar. Sí, ese es inangin. Tú puedes en la banda de taza y otro señor. Okay. I want to talk about another foundation in Genesis. And this is very beautiful. If we see what God was doing. Genesis 2 verse 18. Genesis 2 verse 20. If you can read that. E ora ei, Senhor Deus abisa, não tá bom para o homem da suso. Lo me traga um juda dope que tá pascune. Fordi e fordi terra, Senhor Deus a forma turbeste de sabana e tur para de chelo e aí ribanã para o homem. Para mira com ele o ayama nã. Anto maneira o homem ayama cada ser vivo assim a su nombre da bata. Y el hombre de una nombre una turbestia de cría y para de cielo y turbestia de sabana, mas para Adam no aguardó a ella un yuda do que estaba en paz con él. Porque Dios es un amigo con Adam. Porque Dios es un amigo con Adam. He lets Adam name all the animals. And God did this for a couple reasons. Number one, because he was a friend with Adam. Number two, because he wanted Adam to realize he had a need. So he names all the animals. What does Adam think? Pero que Adam está pensando. All the animals, tú eres animal, ¿no? Have a partner. Tú eres un partner. I'm alone. Pero a mí también so. He made Adam realize that there was a need. Él era que Adam realizaba que tenía una necesidad. And God said, "It is not good for man to be alone." Dios ha dicho no está bueno para el hombre estar solo. And so, God designs, makes Eve. She is the mirror opposite of Adam. One being internal, one being external. This divine relationship to create life. But what does this mean when God says, I will give Adam a helper comparable to her, him, comparable to him? God was not saying when I, I'm going to give her a helper She's going to be your maid. She's going to cook for you. She's going to iron your clothes. She's going to be your helper. He wasn't saying that. 
And they say in the Bisando. You know what the word helper means? Pues aquí la palabra ayuda, dota nifica. It is a Hebrew word. Don palabra hebreo. That is used about 21 times in the Old Testament. But the word is a 21 via the Old Testament view. And every time it is used, it refers to God. And cada via que word usa it refers to Dios. It refers to God's saving strength. It refers to God's Poder sana, um, salvador de Dios. I'm going to give you someone, Adam, that will be by your side, that will be a strength for you, that will help you accomplish what I've called you to do. And so we have to see our spouse as God's strength for us. He said, I'll give one comparable to you. I give you someone who is like you, but who's different. You have to, all of us have two hands, right? Both hands are similar, but both hands are different. And if they were not different, you could not use your hands properly. If you had two right hands, you couldn't use them. You have to have the left hand, which is different. It is similar, but it is different. And this is important to remember in marriage. God has made us different Dios hace nos diferente for a purpose. Pa un propósito. And we're going to see in the afternoon that these differences cause great conflict. Da causa conflicto grande. My wife is different from me. Mi casata otro fue mi. I appreciate her differences. Y a mí te aprecia su diferencia, ¿no? because they help me. So we need to accept our spouse and accept those differences. And then God put Adam into a deep sleep. What part of the body did Adam, did God take to make Eve? A rib how many of you like spare ribs? Okay, okay, okay. Later, later, later. Okay, I don't have to. Okay, okay. <laughs> Why did he take the rib? What is the purpose of a rib? The rib protects the most valuable organ, the heart. The rib came out of Adam's side. Adam. And Solange, if you'd stand up and Solange. come. God took my rib. No, he didn't take my rib. But <laughs> my spouse is casa, to be by my side. Mi casa me está de mí. She cares for my heart. Esta cuida mi corazón. She's my number one cheerleader. How do you know we all need a cheerleader? You, you come home from work, beat up. Someone has to cheer for you. She's my cheerleader. When I'm down, she helps me. But God has put her by my side close to my heart. Cerca de mi corazón. Close to my heart. Cerca de mi corazón. God did not take a bone out of my foot. Dios no fue un hueso fue mi pía. For me to rule over my wife. Para mí gobernar iba mi casa, no. He took it from my side. He took it from Adam's side. Era tu me fue de parte de la banda de Adam. Close to Adam's heart. Cerca de Adam's corazón. And that's marriage. Side by side. Equal before God. Igual delante de Dios. But different. Pero diferente. That's how God 
made it. The only difference is that in the garden, God set man in a place of authority. As the head of the home. That doesn't mean he is Lord over all. But he has a spiritual responsibility before God pero tiene una responsabilidad espiritual delante de Dios to take care of his wife and his family. para cuidar su casa y su familia. God set that in order. Dios ha puesto ese también así. So in Genesis we can see pues en Génesis nos por mira the spiritual laws. El el ley en espiritual aquí. The spiritual principles. El principio en espiritual aquí. That is the foundation. Es este fundeshi that our marriage comes on. And as we keep these principles, we, we put our feet on a rock. And marriage involves three things. Even as, as we are spirit, soul, and body, marriage involves spirit, soul, and body. Marriage has a spiritual part, an emotional part, and a physical part. If those three are not in order, problem is The most important is the spiritual. Es un más importante el aspecto espiritual. My relationship with God. Mi relación con Dios. I have a relationship with God. A mí tiene relación con Dios. Solange has a relationship with God. Solange mi casa tiene una relación con Dios. Together we have a relationship with God. Tanto juntos nos tiene una relación con Dios. Do you know why we came to Curacao? ¿Vos sabés cómo nos vino Curacao? I was thinking I would never come back. I was on vacation here. I was on vacation. Enjoying vacation. La, 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 la. And God speaks to me. I want you to return to Curacao. I said, what? Huh? <laughs> And I began to think about it. Okay, Lord. Okay, the bon señor. If you want me to come back, come back. I went to my wife. The Lord just spoke to me that He wants us to come back. He spoke to me too the same thing. You see, when we both have a relationship with God, we're hearing from God. Your marriage cannot survive without God. Can't. I would not be married today if it wasn't for God. The Bible talks about the three-stranded cord. Marriage involves the three strands. Husband. Esposo, wife esposa, and God y Dios. and God is the one that gives the strength for the marriage to stand so you have to pray together pues doesn't mean you have to pray for an hour could be five minutes Cinco minutos, ¿me all the decisions that we make together we make with God. Do you know what happened at our marriage? We were about to get married. We sent out all the invitation cards. And Solange realized she forgot to invite God. You tell the story, young lady. <laughs> 
Mais Amanda, um, I sent out all the invitation cards. <laughs> Amanda, tu invitation, eh? To Holland, to Curaçao, um, just Holanda. for the people to see the card. Na Holanda, na Curaçao, pa tu rena mire e card. So I'm busy with my list. Es mi ta bezig, druk bezig kom mi list de invitation. And suddenly I feel the Lord asking me. No de repente, Señor, apuntrami, mas sin el Señor de apuntrami. Am I invited to your wedding? A mí también me voy a invitar a un matrimonio. And I got so sad. And I'm asking, it's not triste. Because God is so personal. So Dios es una personal. And I said, Lord, please forgive me. Me dice, Señor, por favor, perdóname. You are the guest of honor. A vos te invitado de honor. I invite you to our wedding. Me te invitado a un nuevo matrimonio. You're the guest of honor. A vos te invitado de honor. Be in our midst. Being tan junto con nos me made nos. And so, at our wedding, it was a very small wedding. We had no money. <laughs> But my pastor, Pastor Kenneth Time, he came from the Curacao to Dallas. And my father came from Holland. That was a whole big thing for me because I didn't, I wasn't good with my father. But I want you to know that on our wedding day, four people accepted the Lord. And one of them was my father. And I thank God. He was the guest of honor. But God wants to be involved in every little detail. Not just the big things. He wants to just be part of every little thing. Can I come too? Am I invited? He's very personal. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So that was our wedding gift from God. My, my sister got saved. Her daughter got saved. Her friend got saved. And Solange's father got saved. We have to let God into our marriage. He's what keeps it together. Well, I'm an American. And I respect time. <laughs> I'm a person of time. And my time is come, coming to an end. I want to respect Brother Whitney who's going to come share.